Hey, how's it going? And today I'm excited to bring you this tutorial about structural blueprint communication. And this is communication between a blueprint and a widget blueprint using a struct. And this is extremely useful and handy and actually forms the basis for an NPC dialogue game. It's one of the key components because we're going to be dealing with a lot of variables being passed from one blueprint to specifically the widget blueprint, which will display them. And the widget blueprint is a little different from your regular blueprint. You cannot create an instance of it or drag it into the scene. And I used to have blueprints communicate with the widget blueprint by way of an object reference, but lately I've been getting nothing but errors that way. So I'm not sure what's going on. I'm not sure if it's a bug, a glitch, or they did a change in the engine. There's honestly no way for me to know. It's not like I can call Unreal Engine up or I sit in on their Tuesday morning staff meetings. So anyway, to get started on this, we're just going to go into the first person. We're just in the first person template right now. And if I, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create our struct. So we right click and we go into blueprints and we go into structure. And I'm just going to call this my struct. And then we'll just double click into it. And we can create a whole list of variables. And that's the power of this because all the variables that we create in here any blueprint including widgets can access them so this one we're just going to call this text message and we're just going to make it a text variable and for some reason that you have to really hard click that to get it to go in and then we could we could literally make a whole list of as many messages as you can imagine but we're just going to use this one so we're going to go ahead and close that and now this is another kind of interesting point. When you're setting up blueprint communication, you want to start with the receiving blueprint first. And I've never really had anybody explain that to me. And the reason why is that if you have a sending blueprint and you haven't created the receiving blueprint, there's nothing for the sending blueprint to send to. So you have to create the receiver first and then the sender. So that's just a little order of operations there. So what we're going to have to do in this particular case is create a widget blueprint so we're going to right click and we're going to go to user interface widget blueprint we're just going to leave it called new widget blueprint and we're going to double click into it and all this is going to do is receive the struct variables or in this case a variable and print out whatever it is that variable is going to be set in the other blueprint in the regular blueprint the first person blueprint and so what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and create a custom event. And so we'll just go custom event. And this has to be created before it can be called. And I'm just going to call me, please. And then on this, we're going to create an input. And we can grab that struct we just created. It doesn't matter what we call it here. It's still going to be keep its original name. So I can just call this my precious and <laughs> and then I just come up here and I can search for my strut and then it's right there. Oh, I didn't come in. My strut. There we go. And we can compile and save that. Now with structs to be able to access the variables inside them you have to break them apart but you can see we have this up here so what I can do is I can it's already laid out for us break right there and those are all of our pins right there we can disable these if we don't want to see them so that's a real nifty feature too so it's just the struct is really the more I understand about it the more valuable I see it is it's just in the beginning it's kind of intimidating so right now there's no message in there and all we're going to do is print a string from here. Print string, and then we're just going to pop this into here. And that completes the receiving side of our communication. So we're done with our new widget blueprint. And we might just want to remember that's call me, please, is the event that we're going to, the function that we're going to call. So let's close out of there. So then what we're going to do is jump in to our BP first person character. And now one of the beautiful things about this 
is that we can access that struct over here. So all we got to do is create a variable. Call this my precious two, and I just search for my struct, and it's right there. And we can make it editable if we want, and hit compile and save. So what we're going to do is we're going to press the keyboard event to trigger all this. It's going to be a keyboard event, and it's going to be the number one. And then what I do is I just drag this onto here, get it, and then off of here. I can go set members in my strut. And you'll notice when I do, you don't see any input pins, but you'll see over here on the details panel, I have the option to enable the input pin. And right here, I can set my message to say, every, everything is coming up roses, okay? And then we can put that there and we could control this by any other kind of input, but we're just going to input it right there. And then the last thing we're going to do is make a connection to our widget blueprint. And this is where I ran into trouble before. And so what I found the best way to do this is just to go to right click and go create widget this is a foolproof way to get access to whatever's inside your widget. And then we just set it to new widget blueprint here and the last thing that we need to do is make the call to the widget blueprint so we have that here and it was called call me please or something wasn't it okay so there it is so now we're all set up and there's that input so we can send input or not send input but we are going to send input so we're going to put this into there and let me double click here oops let me double click here we don't have to even add it to the viewport. So now we're all set up. So if you think about what we are creating here is we're creating a library of variables and any blueprint can access them and any blueprint can set them and get them. And then what's cool about it is it's so reusable and anybody can access them. So it's just a great way you don't have to cast or anything. Everybody can just access the variables. And then once you got the communication methods down, through an interface or through a method like this, this is more direct. You're set to create a lot more complex uh, functionality. And we don't have to add it to the viewport. So now we just compile and save and close. And if we come in here and I walk around down here and I hit one, there's my everything is coming up roses. And that's it, that's it. But this is a very powerful thing to know and I hope you found it helpful. Take care and have a great day.